But one of the things I want to tell people now that this is my first video for the 2021 year, I want to tell people that want to get into trucking, whether you want to be a dispatcher, a CSR, a business owner, a truck driver, an owner operator, whatever you want to do in this industry. The one thing you have to know at the beginning is that you don't know very much. And when you do learn something, you still don't know very much. 17 years in, my wife 23 years in, and every single day we learn something new. Never ever think you know it all. That's my biggest one. So, <clears throat> the numbers are in, and things look good. Now, 2020 was rough. What would I do if I was in some people's position? I would grind it. I wouldn't worry about competition. I wouldn't sweat competition. I wouldn't even think about competition. And that's as a trucking company. I don't worry about what everybody else is doing, what any other trucking company is doing, what other trucking companies rates are, what other drivers are doing. We worry about what we do and providing for our drivers. Now, throughout the week, I'm going to be you know, sharing more information on driver workloads and, and, and pay and stuff like that, trying to help people out on how Intermodal works primarily. But one of the things I want to tell people now that this is my first video for the 2021 year. I want to tell people that want to get into trucking, whether you want to be a dispatcher, a CSR, a business owner, a truck driver, an owner operator, whatever you want to do in this industry. The one thing you have to know at the beginning is that you don't know very much. And when you do learn something, you still don't know very much. 17 years in, my wife 23 years in, and every single day we learn something new. Never ever think you know it all. That's my biggest one um, another one is be patient a lot of people in the transportation industry especially drivers have very little patience a lot of drivers that, that I'm gonna be truthful they live paycheck to paycheck or they live week to week so when they're telling you they're not making any money it's not necessarily that the loads that you're giving them aren't good paying loads it's just possibly financially they're in a whole different level. Now, what I mean by in a whole different level is we, I have personally dispatched throughout the years truck drivers that gross $2,000, $3,000, $4,000 a week and they still tell you that that's not enough, that they can't live with that. Or I actually had a driver, I'll tell you, I had a driver years ago tell me that he couldn't live with anything under $2,000 take home a week. That's a certain lifestyle that the driver is now trying to support for himself. As a trucking company, our job is to provide loads for the drivers to do. If they don't want to do it because it doesn't pay enough or it's too far, they're only local, they don't go out of town, or whatever the reason may be, that's not the dispatchers, the CSRs, or the trucking company's responsibility. We take on work to give to the drivers. If they don't want to do it, you know, they go on the list or they whatever it is that, you know, put them on a different dispatch, whatever. Now, these numbers that we have here for last year that we'll be sharing uh, little by little are, they're hard numbers. They're not fake numbers. These are real numbers, numbers that we know exist because this is what we do. And in our industry, we have to think about one thing. You do not need a high school education, you do not need a college education to be in transportation. Whether it's in the office or in the driver's seat. As a customer service representative, my wife, 23 years, there was no schooling back then for this. Still for dispatch, I see people on Facebook and stuff want to give classes out for X amount of dollars. There's no class that will ever teach you what this is going to teach you on a daily on a daily basis 
I'm not saying that the classes aren't a good idea. I they may be. I I don't know. But there's really no substitute for working for a trucking company and learning what the trucking company really does for a living before you go open up your own business. Now, to those drivers that want to become more successful in 2021 or to the drivers who want more out of 2021, I will say one thing. Listen to your dispatcher. In all reality, talk to them. See what they have, what they don't have. Sometimes, a lot of times actually, we already have one or two or three weeks out in advance book. So when you have a driver that calls in, like for instance, today is Monday, right? You have a driver that calls in at four o'clock on Monday to tell you that he's not gonna work Tuesday. He's shooting himself in the foot. Yes, as a dispatcher or as a trucking company, you have to adjust your loads and you know probably have take a driver off of one and put him on this one or you have to mix and match loads to cover what you gotta cover. But to the drivers who call in constantly, that hurts them because now they're probably going to want you to pull a box for them for that previous for like Wednesday or something. And you can't do that all the time. So they're going to lose at least one or two days, especially if they're out of town drivers, they might lose a little bit more. So drivers need to understand that calling in during the week is not the best thing to do. Um, 20 years ago, 17 years ago, when I started trucking, we didn't have the problems that we do now with drivers calling in. Um, now, a lot of times drivers tell you if they have something to do they don't come to work there's not there's not that responsibility of I have a job anymore at least I'll rephrase that with a lot of the owner operators our owner operator base is real good but there are a lot of owner operators in trucking that they only work three days a week four days a week five days a week and that's fine if they have all their stuff covered but as a trucking company you hire them to work Monday through Friday at the very least, if you can't get a driver to work those five days, then you as a business owner or you as a dispatcher might need to rethink if you really need that driver or not. Because the trucking company doesn't make money if trucks aren't working and the drivers don't make money if they ain't working. It's one thing for the driver not to make money if he doesn't want to, but the trucking company still has to service customers and still has to pay employees and, and, and all sorts of overhead. Not only just staying alive is, is the trucking company's you know, job. I mean, they really do try to you know, provide for a lot of people, customers, employees, and everybody. In transportation, I've had just about everything that you can possibly encounter when it comes to dispatching a driver. From the best of the best and the worst of the worst. Stories about bad things that why they happen in transportation, I don't know. But I'm going to tell you a few stories right here. There are numerous occasions to where I've had it where a driver's wife calls me on the phone while, while the driver's not making any money. I've had a lot of drivers, their wives call me, their girlfriends call me, uh, moms. Honestly, that's part of the trucking business that people don't really see. Uh, there's drivers that tell their wives that there's no work, that they're slow, but in reality, we have work. I've had drivers get two or three different checks, one cut to them, one cut to their mistress, and one come to their, cut to their family. And, you know, to their, theirs is, you know, 50, 60 bucks, the mistress is whatever, and then you have their personal check for their family, you know, the biggest one. But then the wife calls, says he worked, you know, 60 hours last week, and he's only bringing home $300. Why? Honestly, it's not fair to put a dispatcher in that position or anybody in that position because you as a person, especially if you're a truck driver, you should never tell your spouse or anybody something like that and then have them call the dispatcher and blame them for the checks being the way they are. So I would highly recommend truckers not to blame work when it's slow be truthful. Sometimes there is a lot of work. It's just there's work that drivers don't want to do. You know? Yes, sir. That's it. Wrap it up. Let's close up. Sometimes drivers necessarily they don't want to, you know, they don't want to go out of town. They don't want to stay local. They don't want to do hazmat. They don't want to work past three. They don't want to, you know, have a 6 a.m. appointment. So those are real things that really happen and it impacts 
the paycheck. It impacts the salary. It impacts the workload, um, the work week, the work month. What drivers take and what they don't take. And who they tell is very important. I've always thought that it was very bad for a driver to go home and tell his wife you know, that there's no work when there is. I've seen $2 checks. I've seen $5 checks. I've seen $10,000 checks. I've seen $16,000. It, it, it's the individual person. In trucking, it's about the individual person. A driver can work 70 hours in one week. But if you really look at their e-logs, they work 50, 55 max. So if you can't make a good living working 70 hours in one week in transportation, I don't know what to say. That's the truth. There's a lot to do in trucking. There's a lot that can be done. There's a lot of money that can be made without an education. And I'm going to talk about that throughout the week. And I hope you guys uh, listen and watch. And I hope I'm being informative somewhat. But thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. I'll be posting more. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. We go live on Facebook every day from 12 to 1 noon central time. And um, if there's any questions, feel free to ask. And we're here to help 100% free all the time.